And again, on behalf of the committee, I want to thank you all for sharing your time with us this afternoon and your expertise. And I'd ask you each to uh, give a brief introduction after I've called on you. Um, but we will start with Dr. Kegley and um, proceed from there. Thank you very much, Assemblymember Monning. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, my name is Susan Kegley. I'm a PhD chemist and consulting scientist for Pesticide Action Network. Um, I have a PhD in organic chemistry and um, have been doing environmental chemistry for the last 15 years. I wanted to start with um, some logistics of how these chemicals are used so that you guys have a, an idea of what's going on. Um, Methyl, brome, methyl iodide is being marketed as a, quote, drop-in replacement for methyl bromide. Um, the crops that it will be used on if it's registered um, will include strawberries, tomatoes, nurseries, and this is also in the first part of, of your handout. Um, orchard crops and vineyards, when they replant them, um, turf and um, those are the main ones. As far as geographically speaking goes, we're thinking about the central coast and the south coast where all the strawberries are. Inland are the turf farms, the orchards, and the vineyards. So we have fairly broad use of this chemical across the state. Fumigants, all fumigants are applied at very high application rates, and methyl iodide's um, top allowed application rate is about 175 pounds per acre. It's highly drift prone, meaning it will move off site through the air and can get into neighborhoods, homes, schools, and adjacent fields where other workers are working. Um, as far as use patterns goes, I've provided a few pictures on pages two, three, and four of your handout um, of how this chemical is used. It's injected into the soil or dripped into the soil prior to planting, so no live plants around. And in the first picture, you can see the, the shanks coming down from the tractor. And those are dragged through the soil as the fumigant is released. Other application methods involve, and, and most applications are not done without tarping these days. And I think methyl iodide applications all require tarps. So this second picture shows the tarped application. This is an ap a methyl bromide application. And as you see, the workers who are shoveling the soil onto the edges of the tarps have no protective equipment at all, which is um, hopefully changing, but not fast enough. Um, so if you turn to page six in your handout, you'll see a, a plot of fumigant use in California. And what this tells us is that fumigant use has basically remained constant with some minor fluctuation over the years for 30, at about 30 million pounds per year. If methyl iodide is coming in to replace methyl bromide, it'll be on the order of 6 to 10 million pounds per year once it gets fully integrated into the system. Um, there are some great concerns about that, and Assemblymember Berryhill indicated that, you know, risk management was all we needed to do. And on page five of your handout, I'd like to point out all of the poisoning, or many of the poisoning incidents, the big ones, that have happened over the last 10 years involving fumigants. Um, there are many smaller ones as well. But these are incidents that entire communities have to leave their homes. Tens of people are taken to the emergency room. And I guess I'd like to offer that once this chemical is released into the environment, you can't mitigate the risks. You can't pull it back. Um, as far as toxicity goes, methyl iodide is a carcinogen. It's a Prop 65 carcinogen. Probably the most significant issue is the developmental toxicity that causes fetal loss, which translated to humans means miscarriages late in pregnancy, and is also found to reduce survival rates of um, animal, laboratory animals that are being exposed to it when they're babies. Uh, it's a hazardous air pollutant. It's neurotoxic and it's thyroid toxic. An interesting fact related to the carcinogenicity of methyl iodide has to do with the risk, the increased risk of cancer. And as we all know, smoking increases our risk of lung cancer. Um, but Californians who live and work in areas where methyl iodide is used will have an increased cancer risk that is 9 to 90 times higher than what they would have if they were not exposed. A risk of nine times higher is comparable to smoking one pack a day of cigarettes. 
and a risk 90 times higher is not on the chart as far as smoking goes. So we're not talking about a, a benign chemical. Um, finally, I'd like to say that where the legislature can best help is to move agriculture out of the 1940s, which is when these chemicals were introduced, and into the future by providing some assistance for research and outreach to growers to move away from these toxic fumigants to move agriculture into a sustainable future. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor.